Western Energy Alliance represents about 450 companies engaged in all aspects of environmentally responsible exploration and production of oil and natural gas in the West. Our members are proud to produce nearly a quarter of the nation's natural gas and oil production while disturbing less than a tenth of, per, of a percent of public lands. The fundamental question related to BLM's rule before us today is whether we as a nation want to encourage the continued re environmentally responsible production of oil and natural gas on public lands, or do we want to shut it down? If indeed the answer is that we want to encourage the continued environmentally responsible development, then this rule is counterproductive to that goal. I'd like to make three main points. That the rule has not been properly justified, it's redundant with state regulation, and that it cannot be efficiently implemented. Um, B, for the first point, BLM has finalized a costly rule with no justification. It can point to no single incident on federal lands that necessitates this rule, nor can it articulate one risk that is reduced because of this rule. The best BLM does to justify the rule is to cite vague notions of public concern. But are those concerns valid or just the result of misinformation and agitation? A regulator has an obligation to the regulated community and to the public to show that there is a tangible benefit for any cost. And regulatory costs affect not just the regulated industry, but the society at large in the form of higher energy prices, less job creation, and slower economic growth. BLM has failed in its obligation. Which brings me to my next point. Why is BLM infringing on state and tribal authority? The rule duplicates what states are already doing to protect environment, yet BLM can show no deficiency in state regulation that would motivate this rule. And it has no evidence that this costly rule will be more effective than existing state regulations. When the federal government feels compelled to take action that upsets the balance between states and the federal government, there should be a compelling reason to do so. Lack of a single incident or inability to articulate a single risk that reduce, that's reduced hardly seems compelling. In fact, BLM in the rule shows that 99.3% of all completions uh, over the last couple of years um, were in states that have strict hydraulic fracturing regulations. And if you look at APDs approved last year, 99.97% are in states that have recently updated the regulations. That 0.3% represents one well in Kansas. And oh, by the way, Kansas is updating the rules as we speak. BLM has tried to deflect criticism regarding the duplication of state regulation by suggesting that states can obtain a variance if their rules meet or exceed the requirements of the rule. However, there is no genuine mechanism in this rule for them to do so. State regulations already meet the goals of BLM's rule, yet they are not doing it in the exact prescriptive manner that BLM now demands. States are tailored to conditions on the ground and states wisely retain flexibility to enable them to innovate um, and do things like more water recycling and, reuse, and, less, and, and more reuse of water, less fresh water need. Finally, a major problem of this rule is that BLM simply does not have the resources or wherewithal to implement it. BLM petroleum engineering personnel are already spread too thin, and this rule will result in longer delays in the permitting process. Leadership at BLM has tacitly admitted this fact as they are hurrying to meet with states and try to convince them to sign MOUs. Were the rules designed to provide a genuine mechanism for granting a state variance and truly deferring to state rules, then an MOU so stating would make sense. But in the absence of such a mechanism, states are wise for, to refrain from entering into an MOU. So here before us, we have a rule that is not properly justified with discernible environmental benefit. It infringes on state authority and cannot be reasonably implemented. We urge this subcommittee to pass legislation to roll back the rule. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Gama. Uh, 